Are you struggling with fat loss? Well, you shouldn't be. Follow my free step plan to easy fat loss and getting lean. Welcome to today's episode of One Take, your daily book kicking. And if you don't know who I am already, my name is Connor Anderton. I am an online coach of the last decade and I specialize in helping regular guys get in sane shape, insane transformations and get them incredibly strong in the process. So let's get into it. So if you watch the intro, you could see that I've got a, a bulletproof three step plan to fat loss. Let's be honest, I'm a coach. I've been a personal trainer for the last decade. So, you know, the the obvious thing that people come to me for is fat loss, is to get a transformation. People are out of shape, they wanna get in shape. It's the obvious thing, you know? Like being, getting people strong in general for powerlifting competitions, prepping people for performance in jujitsu competitions is very niche, it's very specialized. And you know, when you're training general population, they want to look good, they wanna feel good. They wanna look good on the beach for a holiday or whatever it might be. And what people always come to me with is the fact that they just struggle to even get started. They struggle to understand their body, what to do with nutrition. They don't understand calories. If they do understand calories, they don't understand how many to eat on a daily basis. So there's a lot of different factors. I wanna jump straight into this with the three step plan that I put myself through, put my clients through in order to just guarantee them progress, guarantee them a result. Um, But not only that, I wanna give you the formula So if you're not working with a coach that you can try and test yourself, I guarantee it will work if you follow it. It's just gonna take about, give it about a week is what I would say. You need need some data behind you. You can't just suddenly start a plan and suddenly get results if you have no experience. For myself, when I get people's information, I understand the lifestyle, I can formulate a plan instantly that gets them the result. I can get the right amount of calories, the right train, the right everything. However, if you're not doing that and you just listen to this video and you want to get yourself some results, then we need to talk about how to do that if you don't have the back background knowledge of, of helping a lot of people, okay? So step one, let's get into it. Calories, oh man, you're going to get bored straight away, right? Calories, calories, calories. Do I have to count calories? Yes, you do. You're going to get people out there saying you don't have to count calories in order to get results. Do you know what? No, you don't. If you want some damn average results. If you want to drop five, six kilos, you know, lose a little bit of weight in general, you can just sort of eyeball it, gauge it, just kind of eat less, just kind of cut back on the treats that you've been having, cut back on some portion sizes and kind of wing it. And the weight will drop. But I guarantee you will stall instantly and you won't know what to do. You won't know what else to cut back on. You won't know what to adjust. And getting a really good transformation, having a great physique comes with consistent adjustments. And that's something I talk about all the time. And there's a reason I do weekly feedback for my clients because we're looking at what adjustments do we need to make to avoid a plateau. This is when people quit. They hit a plateau within a week, within a month. They don't know what to do or they try something and it doesn't work and then they quit, put all the weight back on and then quit. They're done, they're done, right? Maybe for another six months, maybe for another year until the next summer comes around or whatever it might be. And you, I don't want people to do this. I want to give people the knowledge um, in very much layman's terms. We don't need to go into any scientific background as to why we do stuff, because that is boring for people. We need to go into layman's terms about how you're going to get this result. So like I said, step one is calories. You have to work out how many calories your body requires on a daily basis to be in a deficit so that it can lose fat. Everybody's metabolic rate is different. Everybody's um, output is different, so the amount of steps you do per day, the amount of movement you do per day, right? The amount of training you do per day. If you're someone who is literally sat on your butt, let's say you travel in the car from 7 a.m. till 8 a.m., you walk up a flight of stairs, you sit at your desk from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m., and then you're in the car till 6 (laughs) p.m., and then you go and sit on the couch, how much movement is actually there? Are you gonna be able to handle more food than somebody who is, I don't know, a postman? If you're a postman and you're doing 20,000 steps a day, are you gonna, is your maintenance calories gonna be a lot higher than the person who sits at a desk? Yes. So there's 
lifestyle factors that we have to take into consideration when it comes to uh, working out your calories, okay? So, how are you gonna work out your calories? Very, very simple. I want you to eat exactly how you normally eat for day one. But what you are going to do is everything you eat, you're going to log, you're going to weigh on a food scale, and you're going to log it into my fitness pal awesome form of calorie tracker after the day's ended you're going to look at how many calories you're eating no you're going to do that for another week so i said do it for one day you're gonna do it for another week you could even do it for five days it doesn't have to be a week let's say you start it on a monday and you're trying to get information to make a great start the monday after you could do this monday to friday within that so whatever your food you eat you're going to get on the scale every morning and you're going to work out what that scale does. If the scale stays the same after you're eating, let's say you're on average, you're eating 3,000 calories on average throughout them five days. And then let's say on average, your weight stays the same. You have probably found your maintenance calories. Okay. Of course, you've got to figure out how many steps were you doing on top of that? Were you doing any cardio? Were you doing any training? Okay, so within that 3,000 calories where I maintain weight, I probably do 6,000 steps as well. I probably weight train two to three times a week, whatever it might be. Start to take these things into consideration. You know, look at the bigger picture. It's not all, it's not all like so narrow. Look at the bigger picture. So when, when you've got the information, and let's say it's the same, drop your calories. Okay, you don't have to change your entire diet. I mean, I would recommend that you, you know, eat whole nutritious foods that are satiating, that are going to be high in micronutrients, high in protein, of course. But that's for another episode. We don't need to talk about that. Um, so if you're on 3,000 calories, you maintain the weight, let's drop 500 calories out of that diet straight away. 500 calories is a great stepping stone just to, just to start with. Adjustments after that don't need to be so big, but it's, that's a really good basis to instantly get the scale moving and get your scenes and progress that, so that you feel good about what's going on, okay? If you did like 100, 200 calories, you'll probably not see the result you want straight away, and you might think, fuck this. 500 calories, so you come down to two and a half thousand calories, and then you get on the scale every morning again, and you watch your weight come down. At some point, it might it might plateau after a week. You might have a really adapted metabolism, but you also might not. You might have a very average metabolism, which, you know, the average is the average for a reason. You're probably average with it. <laughs> so... It might stall after three weeks. It might stall after four weeks on that two and a half thousand calories. When I say stalling, your body weight stalling from dropping. <clears throat> after that, we make a simple adjustment. We could drop 200 calories out of that diet and come down to 2,300. Then we've got more weeks of progress. Really simple, right? If you get to a point where you go, okay, I don't really want to be dropping more calories right now, but I could commit to more output. Okay, I'm going to put 2,000 steps extra per day in. So over the course of the week, I've done an extra 14,000 steps. That's going to equate to X amount of calories burned. And that's going to see extra progression. See where I'm going with it? So step one is working out the calories and going from there. I kind of just got into it, but step two is working out your output. The easiest way to get fat loss is to increase your natural movement. And when I say natural movement, I mean low intensity cardio, that is not going to be hard to recover from. And the easiest thing that none of us need to recover from is walking. Steps, walking. If you've got a dog, that's the easiest way to do it. Get out for half an hour, get out for an hour or whatever it might be. If you've not got a dog, get outside, get on a treadmill if that's easy for you after you've done your training session or if you just feel better in that environment and you can commit to it and it means that you're kind of, you know, not out in the winter, not out in the rain or whatever it might be. A lot of my clients even get the under desk treadmills, which are absolutely fantastic. I bought one of them for my last photo shoot prep and it was an absolute lifesaver for days where I didn't want to get out. I feel a bit sluggish or whatever it might be. The weather weren't great. And I just whack it on, watch some TV and walk on this little treadmill. From there, I'm getting results. I'm getting leaner from doing that. So like I said, if you're someone who doesn't move a lot, got an office job, you're doing three, 4,000 steps a day, you do not need to be doing 10K. You hear the word, or the number, sorry, 10,000, in terms of steps, a lot. That is not some special number. The special number does not exist. It's very individual. So if you're doing three, four thousand, go for five, six thousand a day. I guarantee the scale will drop as long as you are also in a caloric deficit. Don't get me wrong, if you're smashing pizzas and you're in a, a calorie surplus, extra steps probably isn't going to do the trick. But step two is extra movement. Okay. Step three 
in this, I'm going to put two together, is and they kind of match. So I'm going to say to eat higher protein in your diet and work on recovery. So extra protein will help the recovery. And when I say recovery, I mean extra sleep. That is going to help um, you to train harder. It's going to help you to have more energy so that your output is higher. Because trust me, what I find, especially with clients, if their sleep suffers, if they're feeling sluggish on that day, are they going to want to move more? No. Sometimes you move a lot less when you're tired and you don't realize. So therefore, your overall output for the week is actually a lot lower. You've not dropped weight. You go, why? But you've actually been really tired and you've actually not moved more. You've been sat down more. You're not wanting to stand up as much. So I'd always recommend that when you're changing up your diet, you want to put extra protein in your diet. He, eat these nutritious foods. For the reason, it, you know, protein is muscle spurring. It's going to help promote recovery. Um, it's going to help keep you full, keep you satiated. So when the calories come down, you want foods that are going to fill your belly. You don't want food that is ultra fast to digest. Like I said this in another podcast, like rice-based stuff, cereals, uh, basmati rice, things like that. I'm going to just kind of go through that digestive system ultra quick. That's not what you want. You want food that's going to take time to move through that digestive system so that you can stay full and not get as hungry. That's super important. If you're hungry all day, you're not sticking to your diet. There's only so much willpower a person has. And at some point, you're going to quit. Or you're going to binge. Or you're going to order a pizza, have a burger, whatever, right? Um, so on top of that, the extra protein will help with that recovery. So that's going to translate into really working on your sleep. If you are getting three, four, five hours of sleep and struggling, you're going to wake up with higher craving levels. You're going to wake up and not want to train, not want to do your steps, maybe not want to do your cardio. And like I said, that output is going to be lower and make fat loss stall. So if you're somebody who can get six to eight hours of sleep a day and you wake up fresh and you're not waking up starving because you are recovered, you know, um, and because you are recovered, you go, okay, I'm ready for the day. I'm going to walk here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to train hard. That is going to promote natural calorie burning and that's going to get your result. So we've got three steps though. We've got work out your calories over the course of a week. We have... Uh, increasing your output through steps and we have recovery through protein protein and sleep if you do them three things I guarantee you will get leaner it is tried tested proven if somebody tells me within this that it doesn't work I guarantee they've got a terrible physique okay everybody knows that this works I've worked with upwards of a thousand clients at this point over the last decade and trust me it works so if you follow this give it a go and watch your progress go crazy. If you still feel like you're struggling, message me, put a comment below, DM me on Instagram, whatever it is, and ask me some more questions. I'm not gonna try and sign you up or put you on a call. Ask me, I'm open to ask, uh, answering questions for free. Of course, that's what I'm here to do as well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you took something away from it, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in tomorrow's episode.